Choosing the right material settings is one of the most critical aspects of Xtool Studio. And you'll notice that the Xtool material library has changed a little bit since Xtool Creative Space. Well, this tutorial today is gonna to show you exactly where it's located, how you can use it, how you can find the right materials, how you can tweak those settings that you do find and how you can save your own custom materials to reuse over and over again. So let's get ready and let's get started. So here we are guys, we are back to our familiar interface and we're gonna be doing material libraries as I said. I'm gonna show you where it's located now, show you how to use it and most importantly, show you how to utilize it to your advantage. So we're gonna open up our workspace. I am using the F1 Ultra today, but this will work with any laser. They all tap into the material library and one of the great things about Xtool software is that they have such a definitive vast material library. So we're gonna start off with the user interface. If you come over to the right here, this looks very different to what it used to look like. So in there, you've got a material section now and it starts off with unknown material. At, you know, it, we don't know what we're starting with ultimately, so that is where we're gonna go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is auto-focus my laser. If you have a manual focus, make sure it's manually focused. And then once it has done it, I am gonna activate the camera just so that you can all get a good vision of what it is I'm engraving here. So here you go, it's gonna fire up now. So I've got a pine cone, okay? I've gone for a nice distinguishable, easy item first to show you the, you know, the easy way to find a material. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna click on the unknown material and that is gonna bring up this new user interface for the materials. So this is now the Xtool material library. And as you can see, you are greeted with a column on the left with various materials, common wood, metal, plastic, vinyl, paper, silicone, rubber, leather, stone, screen printing, and other. And each of those is packed full of lots and lots of different materials. Now, you probably all know if you've used Xtool before, or if you laser engraved before, or if you're a beginner, you won't know this, but there isn't gonna be everything in here. So you're gonna come across things that just aren't in here. So I'll show you the trick of finding something that is close to what you want. But first of all, we're gonna go through the ideal user case, and that is a pine cone here. So what I will do first is I'll open the material section and pine wood is at the top because I've previously selected it. If it wasn't, what you would do is you first will look at your material and assess what type of material it is. This in this case is a wood. So click on the wood column, and then you've got so many different types of woods in here, and pine wood is one of them. However, there is the search materials section at the top. So if you just wanna search for it, type in pine, and you're gonna get various different types of pine pop up. So the difference between this and the old Xtool Creative Space software is there's a lot more information here now. So we have got, um, we've got a subsection. So we've got pine wood, shows a picture of it, shows if it's flammable or not, which is helpful. It also shows um, reference processing mode. So process on flat surface, same design or batch processing, different design or batch processing, and use conveyor large. They're helping you to know what you can use this material setting on. Then at the bottom, there is also a safety section with precautions, which tells you this could be a flammable material. It's a wood at the end of the day, it could set on fire. In my case, they often do because I always go too powerful. <laughs> Um, turn on air assist, gas pump. If you have one on your machine, it's recommending to do that. And then also, because when you engrave wood, it can get a bit sticky or a bit sooty, it is recommending to clean the material after processing. So that's helpful, if you, especially if you're new and you're not sure what to do, that's a great start. There is also this shop material button. If you click it, it will take you to the Xtool website. And if they sell that material, I'm sure they'll show you it and you can have the option to buy it. I personally buy all my materials from AliExpress, Timu, Amazon, those places. I do buy off Xtool every now and then and they do have great materials. Anyway, we've found our pine wood, okay? So we're gonna click apply. One difference between XCS, the old software and this one, is when you used to click apply, it didn't actually set it initially. Now it does. So that is now set as our set material. So what we'll do next is we will just draw a circle on here and I'll show you the next stage of our material. So let's click engrave. So by default, you can see over here on the right-hand side, it says blue light reference. 
that means it has chosen what it deems as the most suitable laser power and speed combination for that material to do this type of thing. In this case, it's a vector image or a vector shape, should I say. However, you might want it darker, you might want it lighter, you might want to even have an idea of what it's going to be. And that's where this next bit comes in and it's really, really useful. So there is something here called one click set. And if we click on that, you are now going to get an interactive window pop up. And as you can see, if you hover over the different sections, there's a green outline and it shows you the values. So this is basically a material test. They've done their own material test and they've uploaded the results and they've allowed you to quickly set it. So if you want a darker engraving, that one there is 300 speed, 90 power. And you're going to see on the right, if you keep watching here now, I'll change it. It updates the settings automatically to do exactly what you need to do. And I thought what I could do in this tutorial is show you the difference. Okay, so I'm going to do I'm going to do two circles, and we are actually going to engrave these on here. Okay, these two circles are both the same size. I'll put them in a similar position either side of the center point. One of them is going to go for the darkest setting. The other one is going to go for a. I'm not going to go the lightest, but I'm going to go for a light, quite a light one there. And what we will do is we will engrave that on there and we will see how well it works. And then you can get a real life de demonstration of how it actually works. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, we'll click process. You should see it's a nice quick engraving, 46 seconds. I'm going to click start and we're going to do that now. So there you have it, we have got our finished goods. And as you can see, true to what I said on the screen, we have a lighter and a darker engraving. So it does work. The one click set is a useful place to start. And let's take a look at it. I mean, it's hard to compare the two now, but they're pretty close to what they said they were gonna be. So happy with that. That is the ideal case of the material library. So what we'll do now, after I drop that on my desk, is we will move on to Another item, and I'm going to use this. So this is a blue, um, it's like a blue aluminium wallet, okay? And this might not be in their database. So you need to know how to get as close to the settings as possible to get you started with this. So if you, have, if you ever have an item, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put it under the laser just so that we can refresh the image and you can get a good idea of what it is on screen, okay? So let's assess our item, okay? It's metal. It's blue and it felt quite light. So I'm going to say it's aluminium. So I need to find a material in the material library that is aluminium, blue and metal. Well, aluminium is a metal, but you get what I'm saying. That's our starting point. So what you can do here, you can either scroll through it and look, there is a blue metal business card. That's close to what we want. So we could use that as our starting point. There's a blue coated aluminium alloy. There you go. That's another great option. And as you can see, very similar. But if you want to make it even easier, you can type blue into this and it's going to give you all the blue items. And look at this. You're, I mean, you're, you're, you've got so many choices and most of these you'll find will be very similar. But in this case, I am going to go for the blue coated aluminium alloy because that is basically what we've got. So this is great. It's not exactly the same as our item, but it's the same material and it's the same color. Therefore, the settings it should give us should be in the right ballpark. So I always recommend to do a material test on a new material, and I'll be doing another tutorial after this showing that. So make sure you check that out. And whilst I've got you, subscribe to the channel if you're finding this helpful. But now we'll move over here, look, and we will sit, set it to engrave. And now we've got two options. If you click on the laser type, you've got blue light reference and fiber IR reference. By default, it's chosen fiber IR as the best one, and it even gives us a one-click set. And as you can see in this one, they pretty much all do exactly the same thing. Therefore, it doesn't really matter what you select. You might want to go for the fastest one to get it done as quick as possible. Blue as a color, though, is often quite challenging, so you may want to go with more power on that. However, if we change to blue light reference, so this is the bright blue laser now, and then we go to one-click set, You'll see on this, you've got a totally different selection of colors to choose from now. You can still get similar to it, but as we as we know, fiber and IR is better, or at least clearer, more contrasting on metal than the blue laser. 
And that, that, there you go, like you can choose one of these materials. And if we chose that, what we can do is we can engrave it, we can see how it is, and then we can adjust it. So anyway, that moves us on to our next part. What if we've made our own material setting? So let's say, for example, we want to go with the blue laser and 92 power and 193 speed and 200, 100, so 260 lines per centimetre. Don't try that, by the way. It probably won't work. But I just want to show you, if we really love those settings, if we've done our own testing, we really love those settings, we want to save those so we can use them later. And the way you do that, there is an icon over here, which is a save material button. And if you click on it, this is new for Excel Studio. It didn't used to look like this. And you'll see it says add material setting. And up first, it says enter a name for your parameter setting. I'm going to call it, um, tutor I'm just going to call it tutorial blue metal. Just because in this case, you know, that's enough. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not actually going to use this. What you can also do if you hover over is you can upload your own material library, uh, your own material test to it as well. We're not going to do that. We are going to click submit. And then what you've got there, look, if you look on this drop down arrow here now, it says tutorial blue metal. And we now have our own material in there, which we can. So I'll change it. Look, it's in there now. So we can go back any time and use that as long as you've got a vector image on engrave. What I will say for you to bear in mind is if you were scoring it and you click on that, it won't show up because it's a different set of parameters between scoring, engraving, and cutting. So you would need to save within scoring as well as a new one. So I'll call this scoring test. And now if we click on it and we go into the there, you've got this one in here, but you don't see the other one. If we click on engrave, we've got tutorial blue metal, but we don't have the scoring one. So bear that in mind, that's very important because you might save some settings one day and not be able to find them, and that will be why. So there you have it, everyone. That is material selection and material library in a nutshell on Xtool Studio. As you can see, it looks a bit different. It's just as effective. It's good. There is one more thing I want to show you, and that is on the home screen. You can now just go to a materials tab on the left here. You can click on that. And you can actually search for materials on this without even having a work page open. So if you just want to get an idea or someone's asked you for settings, you can quickly go in there, reference it, and let them know. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been really helpful to you. There will be lots more of these micro tutorials coming because I really want to help you guys get up to speed with Xtool Studio. Whether you're coming from Xtool Creative Space or you're brand new to Xtool Lasers, you're in the right place. I'm going to give you all of my information. I don't gatekeep. I'm here to help you guys ask any questions in the comments. And feel free to check out some of the links in the comments to my Facebook page that is full of helpful people and my other resources on there. So have a great day, guys, and let's move on to the next tutorial.